Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of the Life of a Makeup Artist. First of all, Happy New Year. And uh, I mean, 2022 is already shaping up to be such a fun time. And, you know, we could not start this year off without bringing one of my favorite people that I have met in the last year. And that is Jenny Chen of Newness. And she's also Forbes 30 under 30, right? few years ago yeah oh my god I mean listen it could be 10 years ago I am like I am a fan but before we get into all the goodness how are you doing how's your year shaping up I'm good the the skincare makes me look under 30 <laughs> I love that <laughs> the new year is shaping up great yeah the, the overall the year is great oh nice so wait where where you just moved right yeah I actually just moved from San Francisco to Los Angeles um absolutely love it the weather is sunnier i could wear shorts um, oh my gosh it's, nice. it's oh nice my to, gosh to be in a warmer place especially after you know pan the pandemic and yeah. being st stuck at home for a large part it's just nice to be out and about so did you just decide like hey i'm gonna run away from the tech world <laughs> in san fran you're like listen i'm moving yeah. to the beauty side of the yeah. world <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little bit. It's partially that. Part part of the reason why I even started Newness was because in San Francisco, I felt like I was, it was kind of lonely. Like I was one of the only few people that I knew of that really, really loved beauty. And if right. I wanted to meet someone to talk to about beauty, it was hard to find people. Right. Um, very easy to find people to talk to about crypto, but <laughs> beauty is much harder. So, oh my God, LA has more beauty fans. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so I am no stranger to newness um, and how platforms like yours and Super Great is like really taking over the beauty industry. But before we really go into like, you know, a deep dive of that. Um, you're a proud dog mom. Can you tell me about yeah. that? Because I'm like, we have a lot to talk about, but I am a dog aunt. And I'm like, I see your posts sometimes and I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, they're cuties. Yes. <laughs> I, at one point in time, decided that I wanted to make my dogs Insta famous uh -huh. because, I don't know, I got cute. It's like, I feel like it's like a rite of passage. You, you get a dog, you have to make them Insta famous. You take a lot of photos. And I thought it would be really easy because who doesn't love a cute Frenchie? So we right. have two, Wilbur and Harold. Um, but that was, uh, I'm definitely, yeah, I guess. It's like a part-time job, right? It's a part-time job. I was, I was shocked by how much work content creation is. And I think <laughs> as a result of that, I have this huge appreciation for content, for, for content creators. Right. It's so much work to think about the caption, what it is, engaging with the comments. Like I was in engagement pods right. for my dog. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I have, I might have had my share of those, but um, that is so funny. Well, I am like, I'm obsessed and wait, so do, do they still have a, a handle? They do. The handle's the proper pupper, but I am completely retired. So maybe once a year I will post, post a photo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Felt the burnout. <laughs> right. No, I absolutely understand. So before you started Newness, um, you spent four and a half years at Twitch, mm -hmm. which is so crazy. And we all know that Twitch is the king of streaming. I mean, I was doing some research and they have passed... A hundred and let me hold on. Let me get this number right. One thousand one hundred and fourteen billion minutes watch just this year, and nine million unique creators streaming each month. And you help build that. Can you tell us more about your time at Twitch? Yeah, my time at Twitch was one of the most. Um, I mean, it was probably the most career defining moment for me when I had joined. I loved video games and I was playing League of Legends sometimes until 5 a.m. So I heard of this little platform uh -huh. called Twitch uh, really, really early when it was roughly only 100 people. And oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. 100? <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I joined because I wanted to learn how to be uh, a better jungler, which is one of the roles that you play in the game. And. I think just after, I, I initially thought it was only a place to learn how to be better at video games, but upon joining, I was really taken um, kind of, I guess that's when I really fell in love with live streaming. I right. saw people 
propose on streams. Um, the first week I was there, Twitch Plays Pokemon happened, so the whole community got together. Wow. They were typing in the chat to decide how to play that game, and they actually finished it together. I saw quadriplegics get custom Diablo mice made for them and like inspire others. So I think the live streaming, when done right, has this really amazing, powerful community building element of right. it. And it's just really incredible to see what happens when people get together online, feel like they have a place to belong. Right. No, I love that. I had no idea. It's, I mean, it had to start somewhere, but a hundred people, that's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you start on a platform like, like, like that, with what you said, the community building feels, mm -hmm. it's just so much stronger. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, and like internally, it really felt like a family at that point in time right. too. So even at Newness, there's a bunch of us that are still from Twitch or right. ex Twitch employees, and it just feels like an extension of the family. Wow, I love that. Now, what I guess was I also met my husband at Twitch? So. Oh my god, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this you see, this is a juicy part <laughs> that you want to leave out. Wait, how did it, were you guys on the same team? No, 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 that, that wouldn't have been allowed, but we were on different Shit. teams. There weren't, I mean, there weren't that many gamer chicks, so. right. I like stuff. Were you guys in playing games together? Like, <laughs> yeah. how was the, tell me the love story. I love a good yeah. love story. Um, joined Twitch. He, I don't know, there was like this cute boy, and I, we definitely kind of like locked eyes, and it just, it was kind of this like, was it like in know, the like, is it like in the kitchen like did it like in the hall like I'm yeah. trying to like visualize yeah <laughs> I think it was like in the hallways like every time we walked by each other's desk we would try to like sneak looks at well, each the, other and then you kind of notice when someone's right. like oh I think someone's looking at me like Oop. you have butterflies going yeah. into the office like oh maybe yeah. I'll do my makeup today. <laughs> yeah and then um, we were all friends because we all love video games there right. so we would stay after work and play right. video games. And in the That's early so cool. days, like everyone literally hung out with everyone else. Right. So it was just, there was a lot of Twitch romances and couples and we were one of the early ones. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like this should be a Netflix like movie. <laughs> <laughs> I really do because I don't I didn't even think of that but that's that's really I love that because I think when you are in beauty especially and I mm -hmm. think obviously you have these two adjacent industries sometimes people think oh beauty that's cute you know like and it really helps when you have a partner that understands mm, yeah your your world you know mm -hmm. so I think that's really cool I'm happy yeah, for you yeah <laughs> it's the yeah, because a lot of times you look at video games, it's like, oh, my God, you're just wasting your time right. with it. Or you're just playing. I mean, I grew up with tiger parents. So what does that mean? Um, very strict. Oh, OK. It's like a term for very strict Asian parents. Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> they were very much like study, study, study. Right. So video games, makeup. It's like, like you're wasting your time. Yeah, it's like, don't do that. Right. Um, but of course, those are the. You're like, Two Mom, things that I really now. love. Look yeah. at me now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm curious, what was leading a team like? Because, you know, in my little research, I saw that you you, you built the, helped build the company from 100 to over 1,500 employees. Um, and I know there's a lot to be said, but what would you say are some key takeaways for those who are trying to build teams, whether it's like in their freelance business or as a brand founder? Yeah. Oh. Team building is definitely one of the most challenging things, but also I think one of the most rewarding. Um, I would say first and foremost, the foundation of team building is really just genuinely caring about your employees. I know right. it sounds so easy right. and so simple, but I actually feel like, you know, a lot of times, like a lot of managers don't necessarily care about their employee in right. the same way. So just seeing seeing them for who they are, recognizing their talents, but also realizing that there are other things going on in people's lives too right. outside of work right. and kind of like looking at them from the whole human perspective. Right. And then I think when it comes to empowering the teams, I learned this thing called energy management. Mm. I absolutely love it. Um, I look at it based on a couple of different quadrants um, and that's there's one quadrant in particular that I really like to focus on, and it's called the zone of genius. Mm -hmm. That's the area where I really want most of my employees and myself, mm -hmm. I like do my own energy audits, right. to spend my time. So there's things that were 
okay at Mm -hmm. and then there's things we're really exceptional at and then there's things that give us energy and there's things that drain our energy right so a lot of times just as a manager um people will see the things that you're good at and they'll give you more of it because you're really good at it but with those that's the area that you really have to pay attention to because if you give someone too much of something that they're really good at but drains their energy right that's actually what results in burnout right so what you want to do is find the things that they're really exceptional at but make sure you're also giving them the things that give them the energy and just pay attention to the things that's energy draining and I think that's one really good way of caring for yourself which is very important yeah Uh, I'm sure it was a lot on you as well yeah yeah and like for a while I would take on projects because I was good at it I was getting promoted um there was a lot of external validation, but like deep down inside, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really like doing this. Like right. I started off in finance right? and they were like, you, you, like you keep going in finance. You're really good at it. We'll keep giving you raises. We'll keep giving you promotions, more responsibilities. But at the end of the day, I was, I was good at it, but I didn't love it or didn't right. make my heart sing. So right. realizing that was also scary too. And it's hard to walk away from that, but from what you know, that comfort level. Yeah, of yeah. like, oh, like people think I'm good at this. That feels great. Right. Um, but just walking away from it and thinking, okay, maybe I don't want to be a CFO. Like right. maybe it's something else that I want to do. Maybe right. I want to start my own business right. and be a founder or yes. try something completely different. And taking that leap is scary, but it's really worth it. Right. So finance is you know on the back burner now yeah it's switch (laughs) is now in the past and enters newness okay Mm -hmm. she is fab and you know tell us more about how did that come about and like what exactly is newness because i think that you know the us is always ten thousand years behind the rest of the world when it Mm -hmm. comes to you know innovation and live streaming is huge so tell us more about how newness came about and exactly what it is yeah Um, Well, newness came about because I've always been really passionate about beauty and video games. And during my time at Twitch, I actually turned 30. And exactly right around that time, I got really into skincare, like really, really, really into it. Wanted to look for that perfect, you know, elixir of youth and just learn as much as I can about each of the individual ingredients. Right. I started digging on YouTube, on Instagram, and I just kind of went down rabbit holes, but I had so many questions that I didn't have a place to turn to. So here I was at work, so easy for me to like chat with pro players or hop on um, anyone's channel Mm -hmm. and they're live streaming so I could kind of get my questions answered, but I didn't feel like there was that same level of interaction. Like no one's responding to my DMs. Right, exactly. I'm kind of just uncomfortable leaving comments. Right. So... Um, I thought, why isn't there something like this for the beauty demographic? And I wanted to find more like-minded people that really loved this. And I think the beauty community is so incredibly passionate that they deserve a dedicated home just for them. I love that. So do you think, though, that, um, you know, now that newness, you know, obviously is making waves in beauty, do you think that, and, and you separated it from, you know, Twitch, do you think there is a correlation with like gaming and beauty? Because I know that, you know, Elf and other companies are trying to like make this a thing. Do you see like a future with gaming and, and beauty coming together? Um, I hope so, because yeah. I'm both a gamer right. and a beauty person. Right. But I think when I look at brands that, for instance, like advertise on Twitch, um, it almost feels like they're trying to reach a different demographic. Like they're trying to reach the gamer girls, which is great. Um, And a lot of us also love beauty, but there's also an entirely different demographic. Like, I guess I don't, do you do you game or? <laughs> um, I play this game. Called, I play this game called Overcook. That's it. Ah, I like that. Do you one. know that game? That one's good. I'm always burning the hamburgers. <laughs> oh my god, the sushi is so hard. I hate doing the sushi. Yeah. But like, cause it's like so many things. But yeah, the fries. I'll do the fries. Yeah. <laughs> but I always fall overboard. I think it's I'm usually so the funny. one that chops the chops. <laughs> yes. I love that game, and I, I mean, honestly, I play Mario Kart still. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, the best game. Yeah, <laughs> so but there's, I there's, yeah. there's overlap between yeah. the two. Um, but yeah, there's 
some some of it's targeted towards getting access to like a new demographic and then some of it's just for me I think it's really finding of home for right. people that share the same like-minded interest right. so some of my fondest memories from college were um when I would get ready together with my friends. And I think that's really the experience that I want to translate from the IRL world right. into the real world. Like right. if we were to go to Vegas together, I would right. be like, Jalisa, go get ready in your room and right. I'm going to go get ready in mine and right. let's meet downstairs in the hotel lobby in right. an hour and let's go out. Instead, it's like there's one mirror. Maybe there's not even enough room. Right. Let's get all of us together in front of that one mirror. We're getting ready. We're chit-chatting about the day, maybe like, how work has been stressful or how we had this huge win at work today, right. um, the cute boy in class, like whatever it right. is. And then also, ooh, that blue eyeshadow, like right. it looks so good. Where did you get it? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So that, so, you know, from what you're seeing is that, that's how, you know, newness differentiates from all the other platforms. Cause when you look at, you know, mm -hmm. things that have been making waves, you know, I'm sure that all these platforms are gonna start to come out with live streaming. You know, mm -hmm. we're seeing it on Facebook, but if you look to China, Weibo and WeChat and, and Tabao and all of those um, have, have been really putting the pedal to the metal. What are your thoughts on like the trajectory of live streaming in the US? Because I think that it's slowly coming in, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, as Nunes has been gaining this press and like people are like what's happening i mean we both know that brands sometimes take way longer to like hop on board with things mm -hmm. right because we see brands are just getting on tiktok mm -hmm. which is like oh my gosh i know there's a lot of brands that take the risk you know mm -hmm. like tatcha and that we'll get into that later but what do you think you know the trajectory of live streaming do you think it's probably going to take another year or two for people to kind of for it to be normalized i think i'm i mean i'm Definitely very biased, right. but I'm also very <laughs> bullish on live streaming. Right. I think live streaming, but when I look at live streaming, it's not just about like the ability to go live. Right. You can look at like Zoom and right. you, know, you can kind of do something Instagram, similar yeah. there or mm. Instagram. There's lots of like different flavors of live streaming. I think the focus of the live streaming platform really is what differentiates it. And for us, um, I know that there's a lot of live shopping out mm -hmm. there or live streaming out there. But I'd say for us, the focus is really all about community mm -hmm. and connecting people. So when we bring together people together for a moment, what does that interaction look like? Right. How, how do we like introduce you to more friends as right. opposed to getting more fans? So it's right. much more of like building that connective tissue instead. Right. I like that. It's um, live or social selling or live shopping something that you guys are going to integrate over time or is it going to, I mean, if you can share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can share about that. Yes, we will be having live shopping. Okay. Um, it will be integrated. But when I, when I look at shopping, I think of, I think back to shopping more in terms of from like a social perspective. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up going to the mall with my right. friends and it's this social experience it's so fun I trust you and I already feel like your friend so if you tell me oh Jenny that red lipstick looks great on right. you I'm probably gonna buy it but if right. I don't know you right I'm not just gonna take I'm not like random I'm advice. not looking yeah. for a QVC style right right I'm looking more so from like how can I how does it feel more of like I'm going to the mall with my bestie as opposed to right I'm going Win, like when I don't know window shopping or something right right absolutely a question that I get a lot because I am always on all the platforms and all the things what is onboarding like for creators because I know you know we love you Daniel Martin he has dishing with Daniel um, we've seen a lot of brands come on like Tatcha and Rare Beauty, but I know the focus right now is on the creators and building the community, which I love. So how would, you know, the onboarding process work for creators? Yeah, so right now we are focused on really building a safe, inclusive community. Um, saw firsthand how important that is. Right. And in terms of onboarding, you would apply through Newness. Just go to newness.com and then our team would reach out. They'll help you through the process. You'll be sent an account manager. So they'll really like help you every step of the way in case you have any questions. And you'll also be partnered up with a moderator, which mm -hmm. is definitely something that I feel like is really special, you know, because live streaming, it can be it can be nervous the first time around. Right. And just knowing that you have a buddy there to help you with 
anything and to help like guide the conversation along is I find a really comforting feeling. So I, w- I like to think of them as, um, well, I guess I personally really enjoy hosting dinners. So right. whenever you're next in LA, oh you God. should come over. I like to um, eat, so. <laughs> But in addition to hosting dinners, it's not as fun hosting it by yourself. Exactly. It's always more fun. Like maybe I provide the space, but there's also a co-host around to help. They, right. I don't know, are serving the wine or like building the cheese board or right. something. So think of them kind of as your co-host. They're kind of there to keep the conversation going. They're also there right. to grab all the questions because yeah. it's hard. Yeah. When the comments are flowing so fast, yeah, it's yeah. so hard. Exactly. To help you drop links in. Right. So if someone's like, well, what's that foundation that she has on? They could help right. answer it as well. I love that. And then when, because I've been on the platform before, there are crystals can you explain crystals? Because I love, I mean, crystals, all the things, I'm into it. Can you explain the whole concept with crystals and, and what it means for creators? Yeah. for I'm Crystals is literally one of my favorite things. Um, to earn crystals, you participate in the community by watching and supporting other people's streams. So whenever you're there, you're chatting or your hearting messages you in turn earn crystals and we have really fun prizes that we partner with brands with to get and all of those you can just redeem for free for really being a great member of our community so Chris, you earn crystals by being um, an upstanding citizen within our community right. really uplifting other creators and then you can redeem them for some of your favorite goodies mm. but what I love about crystals is for Content creators, I think, you know, like, I guess thinking back to when I started content creating, even for my dog, it's just like content creation is really difficult and we want to try to do what we can to make it easier. So if it's, there's a certain product that you're eyeing, but maybe you can't afford to get it or you, it's just hard to keep up with all of the different product launches. This is one way for you to earn various products for free to then stream about it. Or if you're a viewer and you're constantly investing time in supporting a creator and like cheering them on every single time they're live, we also want to reward you for just being like right. always being there for someone because right. that's really worth something too. Yeah, I love that because when I go on to newness, I see the titles where it's like they're talking about mental health and like just topics that you don't necessarily mm-hmm. see you know, in a live streaming format on yeah. other platforms, which I absolutely love, you yeah. know, because it's integrated with beauty and it's just like, it makes you feel super connected, mm-hmm. not just to, you know, the person, but the platform, because yeah. you're like, this is home. Yeah, that's actually my favorite part about newness. Yeah. Um, I think beauty, oftentimes people immediately jump to like makeup or skincare because it's right. two big categories in it. But what I love about beauty is it's so great at bringing people together. I could easily walk down the street and compliment the coffee barista on right. how amazing their lipstick looks. Or I could also talk to some of my girlfriends right. about um, their beauty routines, or I could chat with you and I'm sure I could learn a ton from you. Right. So it, it could be anything, but at the same time, we also have a lot of people talking about beauty in much more intimate ways, like right. how they used to conceal their scars and now they have a different relationship to beauty right. or how acne has impacted their self-confidence and how they've helped like overcome that. And I think by sharing those really vulnerable stories that make us human, it's also what ends up inspiring other people. And I, I really would love for newness to be a place where you could feel inspired and also empowered. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I already know that this year, newness is going to continue to make waves. Um, and I know that we've learned a lot about newness today, but I want to know, what have you been loving lately? Because I know you are the skincare queen. I saw you <laughs> on Instagram talking all about acids, but I'm curious, what have you been loving lately? What do I need to add to cart? Oh, there <laughs> is instantly a product that comes to mind. It is actually the newness at this time. Um, They just launched. Mm -hmm. It's a skincare brand called Matter of Fact. Uh, I became really close friends with the founder. Actually, Angel invested in their business too. Oh my gosh. And yeah, I got to pay it forward and support others. I love that. (laughs) Um, I love that. But he is literally like a Harvard grad, K-pop star turned formula genius. And it's just so incredible. His His knowledge. Paul. Paul. Um, he has a vitamin C. He, 
he has like a bazillion patents on mm -hmm. his products, but there's two uh, in particular. His vitamin C is great, but I actually think one of my favorites is uh, his minimalist cream. Mm -hmm. It has cholesterol and lanolesterol esters in it. Wow. Which okay. is not well, something that I found as often. Right. Yeah, it's like I need this on my face. It's right like now. the shea butter, but better. Right. <laughs> and it's amazing for dry skin. So I was looking everywhere for that ingredient and their moisturizer. I feel like I need this it. on my whole body. Yes. I mean, if they if they come out, they should come out. Paul, if you're watching this, you right. need to come out with the body cream. <laughs> Listen, the girls need it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing ingredient. Really love um, the efficacy of the line because so much of skincare nowadays is marketing yeah exactly it's one Packaging. of the truly innovative lines or, which we love too. <laughs> i'm a sucker for beautiful packaging me too, me too, me too. <laughs> i but, love uh, that i love the innovation in this line oh my gosh well jenny you have been such a joy thank you so much for coming on yeah, to the thank podcast you for having me. please tell us how we can support you you have shared so much today i know that you know a lot of things have been moving and grooving but how can we find you on social how can we support you for there yeah um well on i think really just coming to newness is the big one um if you want to find me on newness it's newness.com slash jenny and then on instagram i'm jenny l chen and that's it yeah amazing thank you so much and we'll talk to you soon bye thank guys. you <laughs> bye